Hey y'all, the Lorcana Grinder here. I'm Raven. And I'm Alex. Today we have a match between Bodyguard Emerald versus the Mommy Duck. Mommy, standing for Maleficent, Aurora, Mickey, and Inkwell. Inkwell being the right part of the duck. Once again, missed the die roll, but I'm seeing a three, so I'm assuming the player on the right lost. So that means the player on the left is going to mulligan first. One of the first matches they're playing with this deck, so they're still learning. Figuring out what cards they want in their opening hand, putting back what they don't. Do you have any thoughts on the mommy deck? Definitely new uh, for me, specifically playing Stitch Turbo so strictly since we started playing with the proxy cards. Um, definitely helps work your inkwell really well um but doesn't play super high cards so you can definitely get a lot on the field when dealt the right hand solid and then the bodyguard emerald deck uses the emerald cards as ways to gain lore and uses the bodyguard mechanic as a defensive mechanism to protect all of your emerald cards because the bodyguard mechanism if you're not aware when you play any bodyguard character, they have the ability to come in tapped, and then they have to attack a bodyguard character whenever the opponent chooses to challenge. Looks like Mommy plays a Maleficent, biding her time and passes, and then the bodyguard Emerald plays a one-cost Captain Hook and passes. Any thoughts on when you were playing against the bodyguard and the approach you took? Not really. I'm just a general aggressive player, so it's it's weird for me because I can get down to just top decking every time because of how quickly I got my guys on the field versus them playing against me and just kind of knocking them out as soon as they get enough on the field, specifically enough lore opportunity on the field. Yeah, that's one thing in Lorcana. You gotta manages your card advantage and the amount of resources you have because you don't gain a lot of resources. Most cards at best give you a plus one, and that's in a best case scenario. So it looks like the Maleficent gets battled over, plays two for an Aurora, and then puts big Maleficent down as Inkwell and plays another Maleficent. Wow. Really able to gain more super quickly. Figuring out what they want to do. Looks like they're going to quest 2, gain 3 lore, put them ahead. Pascal, very good. There's not many evasion cards, so I don't even think the Bodyguard Emerald deck plays any evasion cards. So I don't think it's actually able to remove it besides removal spells. Which I feel like in future gameplay, when more cards are released and come out, I there's definitely going to be a lot more that you can do with Pascal when it comes to getting them off the field and like really playing with them. Um, but right now, obviously, with what we have, it's just kind of throw him in there, he's free. Lore at this point. Yeah, he doesn't really have any counter play to him right now. Obviously, if you're playing an Amethyst deck, you have Pascal himself to deal with Pascal. But besides that, there's not really any good trades with Pascal. So as long as you can maintain that creature on the field to give Pascal evasion, he just keeps ramping up lore. Mind you, it's only one, but sometimes a game can be decided by that one lore. Oh, absolutely. I'm pretty sure it has been. Yeah, there's been multiple times. Putting down the coconut basket. A lot of plays can be done with the coconut basket. Ooh, decides not to quest either of them. That would have been four lore they would have got. Seems like a misplay there. Could matter later. Plays another bodyguard character. And then now they got two bodyguard characters, so they got a little bit of a wall for them to protect their guys. Untaps, draws for turn. Figuring out what sequencing they want to do. Looks like they're tapping three for shifting Big Aurora. Now all of their characters gain ward, so that Pascal there is now protected by one of the Steal action cards smash, which deals three damage, which is one of the only ways that this deck can deal with Pascal. On top of that, uh, one cost cannon card that goes with Captain Hook. 
having that ward could make a difference when it comes to questing as well. Um, if the opponent's not willing to attack to lose their guys or have damage on their own guys, questing them could gain a lot of lore. Looks like they're talking about the interaction of Cru Cruella. Cruella. Yes, her and the ship did Aurora, talking about how Corella, when she's banished, she can bounce a chosen character. But since Ward gives all other characters, since Aurora gives all other characters Ward, you have to choose the Aurora, which means since the big Aurora goes back to hand, the little Aurora also goes back to hand. So the player would just have two cards in their hand, essentially for free. Imagine if that misplay happened. That'd be not super great. Uh, the Beast comes down. First example of spot removal in the game, or spell and trap removal, kind of. Item card being able to be removed, very, very strong, especially if you're versing a Amber deck that has Lanterns. Lantern's a very good card. It is, it is very, very good. That's played in my Stitch Turbo deck. I have a belief two that I see most often, most commonly, is about two in a game, and that's, you know, two free. Two free uh, inkwells. Yep. Another turn that they decided not to quest the Maleficent and the Aurora, which that would have been eight they missed out on, which would have put them at 15. We're going to say it's the misplay of... Which this turn the they would have won. We're going to say that it is the misplay of the century at this moment in time. Um, it was a very unfortunate turn of events. But this is what these replays are for. Watching gameplay, figuring out what players do, their sequencings, and figuring out what plays they can do better in the future. Yeah, learn from their mistakes, because it was a horrible, horrible, horrible mistake. <laughs> oh, look at all that lore I could have gotten. <laughs> oh my god. That's awful. That was terrible. We didn't catch the smash on the Pascal. The Aurora gave all you dudes ward. And I couldn't choose them, so I had to choose the Aurora. We just missed over there. That's not good. Gameplay is all messed up. But, like we said before, things to note. These are small misplays and card effects that you have to keep on top of to make sure that the game state always maintains proper. But also remember that it's a new game that many people are learning for the first time, which even having already known how to play and learning a new deck, this is still a very unfortunate <laughs> turn but of events. With test playing and watching replays this early on in the game, by the time the tournament scene comes up and running, there's a will be a significant difference between the skill level of the players that have been playing for the last five months and the players who just picked up the game with the new cards. This is true. Even with the very limited 80-ish cards out of the 204, you can start knowing sequencings, interactions, and situations better just by playing. It is actually amazing because of how many cards have come out together. The sequencings that you're able to learn just from those few, is in, it's insane. Looks like the question up here. Because of all the misplays that happened, it looks like the bodyguard and emerald player is going to gain the advantage and win this game. You mean smash the other player early? Yeah. Yes, you are fully... Uh, the, the, the pesco should still be here. It's so sad. It is. It, it, yeah. Very, very, very unfortunate. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Yep. This game should have been won by the mommy deck, but it does show the power of the bodyguard technique, where uh, the bodyguard was able to provide protection, because even in this instance when the Aurora attacked, they had to attack the bodyguard character. Yes, but you also have to remember that the person playing is definitely the reason that this deck failed. Well... I also made a misplay. I smashed your Pascal. But that was True. both of us to maintain proper game state. 
it is up to both people to make sure that all effects are accounted for, all cards are readied, and all things are done properly so that the game state maintains correctness throughout the game. Because once one thing gets uncorrect, the rest of the game just snowballs from there. Looks like they're about to finish. Passing turn. And, and just picking up the cards. Seeds. 